Hello, welcome back to my channel. I'm Home Mess Tom, and this is going to continue my All About Glossier series that I'm doing currently. Today, I'm going to be um, showing you the packaging that the package, like how I received this, um, let you know about the product weight, how much product you're getting, compare it to some things that I already use by cost. I'm going to break down some ingredients. It's going to be hard for me to do because I can't pronounce anything. It's not should be fun. Yeah? Um, so before we jump into this, um, so all the research I've done as far as like ingredients are, are concerned, um, there's this website called Truth and Aging and it basically would be like ingredient and then Truth and Aging in Google and then it would tell me what that ingredient did. I'm not going to go through every ingredient with you because that seems pointless and no one wants to do that. But I'm going to shout out some ingredients that made me go, mm hmm, what's that doing there? Um, or some ingredients I don't understand. Now, I don't know, like, I'm not the be all end all knowledge person for ingredients because I'm learning this myself. But it has been very interesting to go through a product, every product, and every ingredient, and like look it up and be like, oh, that's what that does. Do you know what I mean? So I have a little bit, a little bit better of an understanding of like what's going on in my face, and that's why I'm doing this. As far as like comparing things cost per gram, cost per ounce, I personally like to do that. I'm not telling you not to buy something because it is expensive per ounce. If you love a product, I want you to keep buying it and be happy with it. But I also want you to know how much you're paying for compared to other brands because there are some shocking revelations in this video that you will see. It's like, buckle down, buckle in, buckle up. Here we go. <laughs> so, let's fuck it up, fuck it up. I made my order from Glossier on February 12th, 2019, and I spent $140.40, and I did use the promo code, which I will tell you here in a second, because it was available to me. So as far as promo codes go, I use three different things to help myself save some money. And not all of these extensions work on every website. So I use Google Chrome on my computer. And then there are two things you should definitely look into. There is Wikibuy. And what Wikibuy does is um, if you want to track an item to see if it lowers in cost at all, you basically like click it. It's like your Chrome extension. You're like, I want to buy this, but I want to wait to see if the price drops at all. And then it also will search the internet for promo codes for you. Another similar pro um, extension for Chrome is going to be Honey. And Honey, basically, when you get to check out, it pops down. And it's like, here are all the promo codes we know of. Would you like us to try them? You hit yeah. It will run through all of them, and then it will save the one that saves you the most money. So that's what I do to save myself a dollar dollar. And then I also use Ebates as well. And there's just like a Chrome extension for that. When you get to a website, if it participates in Ebates, it'll like pop up and be like, hey, this website participates in Ebates. Just so you know. Do you know what I'm saying? So like, it's very easy. Buy stuff on your computer, use these things, you'll save yourself a dollar, you'll get a real little rebate later on. And I sound like that kid from mine where he's like, and then I'm, and so I'm, and he's like, do you make a testimonial? Does anyone know what I'm talking about? No one does. I'm sure. So before we jump into this, let's look at the Glossier website. I'm going to walk you through it in voiceover. It's happening. All right, guys, this is the Glossier website. Whenever I was buying my products, this is what it looked like. It looks a little different now because I do have Glossier Play. As you can see, it's a very chic, minimal kind of design that we have going on here. Um, so there are some of the products. And as I said, they do have a skincare line. And then I'm going to point out the solution here in a second because I really want to try that product, actually. Um, so I'll get to that at some point. But, of course, that's not for this video. Scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. All right, Tom, let's go to the makeup. Okay, as you can see, here are all the, wow, my internet connection must be really fucking slow. So you can buy some of the products together in groups and you save a little bit of money. And I did that for the things that I did purchase. And so here you can see a bunch of little photos. And then we are going to look at their shade finder, which is actually how I found my shade. So here's the shade finder. You kind of click from where you start. 
I mean, you pretty much know where you are when you start and then you have to like kind of work your way around, see what shade's going to work best for you. Um, I know that I mentioned that the brand is very female forward, which it still is, but there are a couple male models on here, which is something that I think is really cool. And then um, at the bottom there, if you don't know what color to choose or what shade, you can actually email a photo of yourself to Team Glossier. I, ordered, I did my order on February 12th. Uh, did it a little bit after noon. Did it at 3.41 p.m. I got my shipping notification the next day. I guess that would be the 13th of February. And so I received the package on the 16th of February, so that's Saturday. It came real fast. I had no issues with shipping. None of that. So that's good to know because you can only buy Glossier on Glossier's website. It's not, there's no other place you can buy Glossier. So that's good. Shipping, good. I do believe if you spend over $30, you get free shipping not, um, in the US, and then there's different shipping charges for outside of the US. I will put that information here for you. I really like the way the package came. It's like in a plain brown box and you open it up and it's like... Glorious Melential Pink Color. Um, but they call it Glossier Pink and I get it. I am not wearing a Glossier lip, but everything else on my face is Glossier. I'm trying out new primer. That has nothing to do with what's going on here. I know I'm gonna pronounce things wrong. And as I said at the beginning of the video, I'm like not the be all end all knower of all the things of these things inside these things. So when I research the ingredients, I'm just making my best guess at what they do in the product. And there's that. I'm not trying to scare you away from trying the product. I'm just pointing out some things that would make go, <laughs> what? <laughs> and you'll see that in the very first product we're talking about. I'm gonna tell you the key ingredients that they list on Glossier's website. It's like the star ingredients. And then we also, I'm gonna tell you about the ingredients that like, I like went through and found and learned and did all blah blah blah. Also, I'm gonna tell you the claims that it claims for this product to do. I'm going to tell you the claims not because I'm going to speak on them, but sometimes the ingredients you understand a little bit better why they're making those claims because of the products that are inside. Does that make sense? So if it claims to be glowy, we're gonna figure out those ingredients and wax them. So we're gonna start with the skin tint. The skin tint, it comes in a one ounce package. It is $26 and that makes it $26 an ounce. Now, I don't use a lot of skin tints or like, like tinted moisturizers, so I compared this to foundations, which like really isn't fair, but I wanted to compare it cost per ounce to things that I already used. Um, so I made spreadsheets, because I love a spreadsheet moment, and you love access to these spreadsheets in the description box below, where you check out to see against brands that I use. Now, you can't edit it, but I will keep adding to this list as I keep trying brands and we will see where they fall. Does this remind you of anyone? Yes, it should, because you should be watching Stephanie Nicole. I mean, we can talk a little bit about packaging because I don't talk about it anywhere else. Um, so it's like, okay, it's like little, like, cute, it's like, feels little. I just want to do some comparison. This is the Fenty. You get a little bit more than an ounce. You get 1.08 ounce. Now, I realized, like, this is a foundation, and like, 
part of this. Like you would normally get a tinted moisturizer and like a squeezy like toothpaste tube, but like I mean this feels like so lux, but you're also paying for packaging because this is a little bit more pricey, but you're you're getting the same amount of product essentially. So like this makes me go, hmm. Like I don't care for this. And it's like I'm not getting to the review part yet because I'm not doing a review until later. I'm still testing these out. Whew. So, and then it doesn't have a pump. It like has a little squeezer, little squeezer and I've been using it. So it's not the cutest it could look, but it's what's the reality of it. An interesting thing I found is that this had been reformulated on June 5th, 2018. Or June 5th, 2018 is like when the new formulation came out. Um, so I read up a little bit about this. The way they launched it was kind of weird. Like if you bought it, an old skin tint, they would send you the old skin tint as well as the new formulation because they were going to launch it. So they want you to feel like some kind of way whenever like the new formulation comes out. I did, in my digging, based on like my limited knowledge of ingredients and what they do, it seemed like they were taking out things and switching them for this, something else that does the same exact thing. So like no buzzword ingredients were added, which is probably why they kept the formulation kind of quiet. Like, it wasn't like they were adding hyaluronic acid, which is like a buzzword, or um, salicylic acid, or like, they're not adding like, glycolic, you know, like, not things that you would put in the tinted moisturizer, but like, a binding agent for a binding agent, a preservative for a preservative, but those aren't like interesting ingredients and they're not gonna like help you sell the product. So I think that's why they really didn't talk about it. That's my understanding. Okay, so they list two star ingredients in this product. There is the diamond powder, which is glowy and reflects light. Can you believe? Basically what that's gonna do is like, one, reflect light, which is going to give you this like, a dewy, glowy sensation that we have going on. It's also gonna distract your eyes from all of the crazy, poor stuff that I have going on on my face. Not that I feel like I have left, but like, that's the idea. When something reflect light back in your face. It's not like accentuating something. You know what I'm saying? We also have glycerin, which is a humectant. And I already knew that because of where I worked and glycerin was an ingredient in something. So basically it helps the skin attract moisture to stay moisturized. So whereas like a mattifying product is going to not do that. This one's like, come on moisture. Come on nature, get inside of me. You don't want nature inside of you all the time because like there are pollutants and things in this. You want that in your skin. The claims of this product is hypoallergenic, dermatologist tested, appropriate for all skin types, non-settling, non-irritating, paraben-free, fragrance-free, cruelty-free, and vision, or vegan, as the plebeians say. So, it's got a lot of things going for it. So, I know some people are worried about silicone. Almost every product in the Glossier's repertoire has silicone. I'm not afraid of silicone, it's gonna smooth things out, it's gonna make me look good. Um, but you can make your own conclusions and do your own research on silicone, whether or not that's something you want to put on your face, or some people don't like silicone based products. But this product also contains mica, which is a mineral, and that's gonna add to this shimmering finish that we got going on here. Blur, distract, reflect. Blur, distract, reflect. That should be Glossier's motto because a lot of these products products have ingredients that are like blur, extract, reflect. So the most interesting thing about this product that if you follow me on Instagram at Hope Nest Tom on all platforms um, <laughs> that I like wigged out about it was like the first ingredient where I was like the fuck is this doing in here because it is sodium chloride and for those of you who didn't take chemistry in high school that's table salt. So what's she doing in there? According to Truth and Aging, which is uh, the website that I use to do all my research. Uh, so, sodium chloride, it's like used to increase viscosity, like thicken the product to make it more pleasing uh, to touch, put on your face. That's what salt is doing in this little guy here. I don't know how irritating that would be for the skin because we have like skin scrubs and stuff that have salt in them, but like, what? That was weird to me, but I still have it on my face. <laughs> right now, currently. So then we have my favorite new ingredient that I like discovered while I was doing things. It's called boron nitride. Okay, spell that for the people, Tom. Thank you. You are the best. I love you all, okay? Here we go, some big words are coming at you. Boron nitride is a polymorphic 
chemical compound consisting of boron and nitrogen. And so it has light scattering properties, blurs appearances of wrinkles and discolorations, absorbs excess oil um, in the face and disperses pigment evenly. That does so many fucking things, can you believe? Me just stealing and appropriating other gay people saying for my own purposes. And then also Truth and Aging will tell you like how da dangerous a product is. Um, all of the ingredients were low like on their concern list. Some of the things like you don't want to digest, but like I don't think you're going to put those products in your mouth. I may have done that. But, like that's not what I'm recommending. It's not what they recommend, so. So like I'm a big fan of this bar on I tried because what? It reflects. It makes you look glowy. It makes you look amazing. What does it do? Blur. Distracts you from my wrinkles. Distracts doing all these amazing things, right? And it's also absorbing the oil from my face, which she needs because I'm a little bit oily. I think a lot of the other ingredients in this product can interact with that, but because you do look glowy when you wear Glossier, and that's like kind of the point. Um, there's no ecological threats from like when you wash off your face. So the fish are fine, in case you were worried. They might not be fine from other things we're doing, but like boron nitride, not a problem. The weird thing about the diamond powder being um, like, and it, like the ad was like, we have diamond powder in it. Um, ingredient, a key ingredient is like, it's pretty low. So most of the time, if you're looking at a label, and this includes like food, the first ingredient, there's gonna be the most of that ingredient in whatever you're eating or putting on your face. And then when you get closer to the end, that is like what the least amount of product, like of that, there's less of that ingredient than any of the things that came before it. So diamond powder is really not on the list. It's like one of the last ones before you start getting into like the pigments that like make the colors that you put on your face that spread, like that's what, you know what I mean? So I thought that was interesting. Also, is it real diamond powder? I can't be sure. I tried to like look into that and like it seems to be diamond powder and it seems to be like a thing they put in other stuff. Not glossy, but like other cosmetic brands use diamond powder as a buzzword. But your bitch can't get a diamond anywhere because I'm poor. But you're putting it in my... I just like don't get it. Is it cubic zirconium? I can afford that. Okay, cost per ounce. Let's go to the spreadsheet. So as I said, it's not really fair to what I'm comparing this to. So it's like more expensive than a drugstore foundation, but like less expensive than most of the things you can find at Sephora. Uh, so maybe I do need to make a tinted moisturizer list. But as I explore more brands, I'm not gonna buy tinted moisturizers because it's like not my favorite thing. In fact, I maybe keep buying Glossier for my everyday tinted moisturizer. Does that make, you know what I mean? Because I really enjoy it. But like, I want to be putting like the foundations to the test and not really so much tinted moisturizer unless it's a brand that only carries like something like this and I will maybe start making its own spreadsheet. So it falls right between two products that I've used, the Maybelline Super Safe Full Coverage Foundation and then the Fenty Pro Filter Soft Matte Longwear Foundation. Dear God, guys, can you shorten the names of your shit? <laughs> now I'm going to talk about Glossier Stretch Concealer. So this is the packaging. She's cute. She's got a metal top. I, the thing I don't like about it is that it gets fingerprints all over it. I can get past that. It's a little potted concealer. I have the color G12 here in my arms. The stretch concealer will cost you 18 US dollars. That's 0.17 ounces in the pot. And when you make that an ounce, it would cost $105.88 per ounce. We'll talk a little bit more about that later. Let's get to the ingredients. So the key ingredients that they list as the simple sauce on their website is um, beeswax and microcrystalline wax, and that's gonna give the concealer a super elastic consistency, which allows it to move with your expressions and not stiffen and cake. Because it's a stretch concealer, you're not gonna have the issues of some traditional concealers where you're like, oh my god, I can't move my face because of like a crusty. And you know the feeling, especially if you start chip tape. And there's also avocado and jojoba oil, 
and that's gonna nerf. These are the claims, these are the ingredients, and then what they say about the ingredients, not like what I found, okay? Uh, but mostly they're right. So you can't put a key ingredient on Kalai about what that key ingredient does, that'd be stupid. Avocado and jojoba oil, nourish skin, prevent water loss, and give a natural dewy finish. Avocado seems like a buzzword to me because it's very millennial. Fresh avocado. Then there's cocoa butter, which is a natural fat full of the good stuff. <laughs> this is obviously something I pulled, quoted right from the website. Full of the good stuff. It promotes skin elasticity and suppleness. Here we are again with the word elastic. It's a buzzword. The last key ingredient that they list is adaptable mineral pigments, which merge seamlessly with the widest range of skin tones for a natural looking coverage. The claims. Hypoallergenic, dermatologist tested, ophthalmologist tested, non-comedogenic, paraben free, fragrance free, cruelty free. Let's talk about non-comedogenic for just a minute. So there is no like real testing about what non-comedogenic means. No, I mean, like, it means it doesn't clog your pores. When you see something not comedogenic, it's supposed to be a buzzword for those of us with oily skin and are acne prone because it's not comedogenic, it's not gonna clog your pores. And especially, I worked in the waxing industry for a long time. If you got waxed, you did not want to use a comedogenic product afterward because you want your skin to breathe, you want that area to breathe. So we use non comedogenic products. That's what they're advertised as. But the thing is, it doesn't seem like that's a regulated thing that they, like when you, you can put that on your box. It doesn't, to me there's the FDA, no one is tracking that and telling you that what that means and what level of that that means and how non-comedogenic it is. You can just, it's just a claim that most brands, like a lot of brands are making it's a buzzword, but doesn't kind of mean anything. Because like technically silicone, would that clog your skin? Like it's going over, it's like creating a film. This it has one ingredient that like made me go, I'm so confused. It has the ingredient polyethylene, which I think I nailed it. It's spelled for the children. Yes. According to Truth and Aging, this is polyethylene is a polymer or plastic used in a variety of skincare and beauty products, including eyeliners, mascara, eyeshadows, eyebrow pencils, lipsticks, blushes, face powders, foundations, and as well as skin cleansers and skincare products because of its versatile properties as an abrasive ingredient, adhesive, binder, bulky agent, emulsion stabilizer, film former. So like that's one thing where I'm like, if it forms a film, that's comedogenic. In my head, those are the same. Now it could be wrong, right? Because I'm not a scientist, I'm not a chemical scientist, I'm not a cosmetic scientist. Um, so, but like, I hear the word film and I think of a Dove soap because it leaves that residue on you, which isn't good because we talked, like, this is just like my knowledge, like, working in industries. So when we would wax, we'd be like, if you use Dove soap, you don't want to use that, you want to use something that's not going to clog your pores, something film free. So this product claims to be film free, not comedogenic. But then it has this ingredient in it, which like essentially is both of those things. And it's also a viscosity increasing agent. So basically just like table salt in the last one, this is gonna increase it. But it does a lot of things, which I'm not, I'm not complaining that the polyethylene is in the product. The thing that was so weird, it suggested not to use on broken or ir broken or irritated skin. So what do most people use concealer for? I mostly use it to highlight. Like my T-zone, I like use it to pop with, like I always get a lighter concealer so I can be like, hello, put it under my eyes, put it right here on the forehead and then I contour the shit out of the rest of my face. That's what I normally do. So a lot of people like to use concealer to cover blemish. Like, like I did with this zit right under my lip today. I used some of this. It just seems like an interesting ingredient to be in your concealer. <laughs> Uh, and, and like no other ingredient in any of the products have this polyethylene in it, or not that I, not that I remember, but I just thought it was because I was like focusing on it's a concealer to conceal a blemish, which is irritated skin. So, and if you are someone who knows a lot about like um, cosmetic chemistry and can explain why, that would be, or like, if I'm wrong, or if like the internet's wrong, which like, surprise, the internet's wrong all the time. Surprise, I'm gonna be wrong a lot, just like, honesty. I'm not the best at all of these things, but I'm just like, trying to learn, and I want, that's why I'm doing this, so we can all learn together. The oh, other interesting ingredients that I found that wasn't in the key ingredients is hexa, ooh, 
hexadecene, hexade, hexadec, hexadecene copolymer. And that provides water and wear resistance, serves as a moisture barrier, provides pigment dispersion, specifically in skin creams and cosmetics. Allergic contact dermatitis has been caused by hexadecene, hexadecene. You know what I'm talking about. Uh, I just wanted to put that last one there because no one wants this. I feel like if you're prone to dermatitis, contact dermatitis, you want to stay away. But I put this on there because it's water resistant, which is important. Uh, especially I feel like the beauty of glossy is you're not going to finish with like, you're not going to finish with a setting spray because like it's already doing that. Like you already have that dew, that glow, that finish. Um, could you imagine if you like put the powder on and then have, like, it's a whole big process. Like I don't want to finish, like if I'm doing like a 10 minute phase, then I don't want to have to finish with setting powder. I'm sorry, the setting spray. So it being water resistant, it's like, oh yeah, it's gonna like last if it's raining out or something, or just stay on a little bit better. Okay, that ends it for the concealer. Let me know if that like polyethylene ingredient warning thing, I, I wanna know more. Foot cost $105.88 per ounce. To compare it to some popular brands that you may have tried, the Tarte Shape Tape Concealer, you get 0.33 ounces and it costs $81.82 per ounce. So it's a little bit cheaper, but even cheaper is my current favorite concealer, is the Too Faced Born This Way Super Coverage Multi-Use Sculpting Concealer. And I'm going to say all of that because I know that Too Faced has two concealers and I like the sculpting one and I've never used the other one. Anyway, that one is going to be cost you about $58 per ounce. That's an insane difference between $58 an ounce and like you get a ton of products in this Born This Way concealer. Like that's a lot different. Those are very different. Um, this is gonna last me forever. And like this one, I probably get a few months out of. That's my guess, if I'm using it all the time. The only ex more expensive concealer that I have tried, and you're all gonna say like, Pam McGrath, well she doesn't have concealer. So you're wrong, um, but probably, and I probably will own it when it happens. Oh my God, if Pat McGrath ever releases complexion, it's gonna be, it's gonna be a wreck. But I will be there day one, okay? Anyway, the most expensive concealer I have ever used was the Burberry Sheer Luminous Concealer. It's $40 for 0 0.08 ounces, which makes it a whopping $500 per ounce. Oh my God. But this is the second most expensive concealer I have ever tried from Glossier. That's just the facts. There's not much product in here and it costs $22. So it's a little bit more expensive. So when you start thinking about that, you're like, oh, my shape tape's cheaper, costs more, you're getting more, but so in the long run it costs less. Does that make sense? That's why it's important to like think about these things because sometimes you get a good deal. I'm not sure about that price considering like it's a step down from Burberry and it's like a couple notches up from the con concealer. <laughs> Moira Rose, <laughs> the concealer that I've been using. Yeah, that's the only thing that, it's like, that's expensive. She's expensive, she's over $100 per ounce. Who do you think you are, La Mer? Oh God, does La Mer make concealer? Cause I'm sure that's just expensive. But you're in the human. I'm like, oh my God, let's do that, that, that day. The next ingredient we have is the powder. what it comes in and then there's a little mesh topping to it. I hope you can see that because I'm not about to make a mess. Also, we'll talk about how expensive this one is. So, this is in the shade G11 slash G12 or hyphen dash. <laughs> Water cost, <laughs> why does this sound so weird? The water costs $22 and you get 0.35 ounces at $88 per as I said, we will come back to the price rounds of Vanessa. So think about it. Think about your favorite setting powder. How much did you pay for it? And how much is inside of it? While you think about that, we're going to talk about the key ingredients. <laughs> is it? The first, so diamond powder comes back. It was in our, it's in our, it's already on our face. Now we're going to add some more diamond powder to our face. 
I would say it again, it has light reflecting particles that counteract the flat effect of most powders. So the idea of the wilder is it's matte, not flat. So it's still a skin finish, but it's like also going to control your oily issues. Peel and Clay is a soft and incredibly fine. It absorbs oil, but vanishes into the skin instead of sitting and keeping on top. And it also has a vitamin E, and that's going to give the wilder its silky, non-drying texture. The claims of the Wouter are it's hypoallergenic, dermatologist tested, talc free, paraben free, fragrance free, vegan, and cruelty free. I believe Glossy as a brand as a whole is cruelty free, but not all of the products are vegan. There are, there's lots of makeup, which is also like a light reflecting ingredient, and then also my new friend boron nitrides in here. So those are pretty high at the top of the list of ingredients. So it's like there's a lot of that in here. As we learned from before, light reflectors, blurring, all of that goodness. So mica is the first ingredient, and then um, boron nitride is going to be like the third ingredient. There's only one ingredient between them. As I said before, boron nitride also controls oil. That's one of the things that it does. Okay, so there's two other ingredients in here that like took a peep at, we have polymethyl, polymethyl sulsusquisin, <laughs> polymethyl sulsusquisin, polymethyl sulsusquisin, polymethyl sulsusquisin, polymethyl sulsusquisin, polymethyl sulsusquisin, I just gonna spell it. So, um, uh, this ingredient I put on here because uh, I wanted you to know that it's a silicone that creates a smooth and silky feel, so adding to that match, not flat, but also it's a water repellent, so adding to that water resistance theme we have going here. And then also vitamin E, it's the last ingredient listed, which means the use leads, and it's one of their key ingredients, so. I don't know why you want your key ingredient to be like last on the list. Like the very last one. Let's do some cost comparison. So as I said, you get, so as I said before, you get 0.25 ounces in here and it costs you $22, making it $88 per ounce. To put that in perspective, the Laura Mercier, which I have on this, I did not plan this, the translucent setting powder, which is like a popular one, you get a whole ass ounce for $38 or $39. Anyway, there's a whole ounce of product and it's about $40. It costs twice as much for one quarter of the product from Glossier. I've seen people complain about the price of this Laura Mercier. I'm like, but not really because you're getting so much. You get so much in the Laura Mercier. And I'm not like saying that Laura Mercier is the best. It's one that I personally like, but I know it's not for everyone. But it's like also, but it's pretty cost effective. The only other one that I found, I have so I've tried Laura Mercier. I put so, I had to put some more on here, not all things that I've tried. Because I don't normally branch out because I like a setting powder, I'm just gonna stick to it. That's just who I am. Why are setting powders such different costs? <laughs> like, I don't understand. Now, you might be saying, like, $22 isn't bad. And no, it's not. $22 isn't, it's not, like, bad for a setting powder. But you're also not getting as much product as you get in some other setting powders. You see what I'm saying? Uh, it puts, like, middle in the list of things that I've tried. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Let's talk about boy bro. <laughs> Boy Brow is going to cost you a cool $16 for 0.11 ounces. That's going to make it $145.45 per ounce. Ooh, that hurts, but also it's like a little bottle, so to make it an ounce, you have to do like times 10 almost. Okay, so that, so think about that. Think about that's a lot per ounce, $145 per ounce. I have the color here, brown. The key ingredients, the star ingredients that uh, Glossier wants us to know about are beeswax and carnauba, carnauba wax. Carnauba. Spell it for the children, Tom. Walk us through nature. So these are natural waxes that hold hairs in place without stiffness. Uh, oleic acid, which I'm guessing I'm right. I'm smart. Uh, an emollient derived from olive oil that nourishes and moisturizes, so like a conditioner for your eyebrows. Uh, lecithin. Lecithin. 
which is a natural fatty substance that adds a silky smooth texture and subtle sheen. So, mad not flat. If we want to bring that background, and atel collagen, atel collagen, and that's a collagen derivative that helps condition and strengthen the hair fiber. Claims. Claims are it's alcohol free, fragrance free, paraben free, cruelty free, appropriate for all skin types. It's not a skin products, so that makes sense. Um, hypoallergenic, ophthalmologist tested, dermatologist tested. So ophthalmologist tested would be like an eye doctor, not an optometrist, but like an ophthalmologist. So it's like safe to be around your eye. Like we want that to be safe to be around your eye. Some of the interesting ingredients, but aren't, but aren't. But on to the, beyond the key ingredients um, are going to be PVP, which is short for <laughs> polyvinyl pyrolidone. I think I nailed that. Polyvinyl pyrolidone, which is a binder that keeps emulsions from separating um, into their oil and liquid components. So there are oils and there are liquids in here. So you know how when you have oil and water, kind of like what's happening here in this clinique. It's like doing that for you the whole time. It's a binder. So that's interesting. Good to know. Thank you, PVP. And then uh, alkyl collagen. So um, this is the solubilization of a collagen a fibrous protein usually obtained from shark skin or cows. Works as a hydrating agent, holds in moisture. Um, I don't know how that works or how you get that. I tried to like look into it. So I emailed Glossier. I might not have been clear enough with my question, which has been like a recurring problem in my life recently. Um, I'm not gonna put all that on you, but I just know that's the thing that I've been doing. I've been asking questions, but the wrong question. Uh, because this one does not claim to be vegan. So I'm assuming this collagen isn't vegan. Um, but like, how would you get the collagen from shark skin or cow skin, cruelty freely. That's my question. Um, I know it's a, like they responded that it's a sea-based alkyl collagen. That's about that's the best I could do. So I don't know. I don't know where that comes from. I don't because um, I was curious about that. We have poly PMMA polymethyl methyl methacrylate. Jesus. Polymethyl methacrylate, or also known as PMMA, is a known, is a widely known as a plastic component used in products such as plexiglass and other transparent glass substitutes. It's likely to use, so Truth and Aging said that it's likely to um, use to make the product apply smoothly, which is fine. But like, also it's something that they put in plexiglass. And that's an interesting thing to be putting on near around my face. Now it's not in any of the, I don't believe that this product came up in any of the other uh, glossy products. So it's like, it's only in this one, which is going on like hair. So I guess it's like not a big deal. Like, I don't like things that go in plexiglass around my eye because Lord knows I don't want plexiglass near my eye. So I don't know, that one's weird. That one's weird to me. Like, I get the purpose if it's like gonna make it apply smoothly, got you, cool, but like, it goes in plexiglass. It's weird. It's weird. Good day, man. Okay, so let's do some cost per ounce breakdown. Let's do some comparisons. This isn't a product I would normally reach for. I'm normally like a brow powder kind of person or like maybe a brow pencil. So, like, a pomade gel situation isn't my jam. So, I wanted to compare it to similar products because, like, why would I compare this to a brow powder? Because brow powders last forever and this is not, this is not, this is gonna dry out. It's like a mascara, it's gonna do that. So, as I said, this costs $145.45 per ounce. Some other really popular ones and some other ones that my friends have liked. Um, I kind of put them all on this list. The Benefit Gimme Brow is more expensive. You get one ounce, in, uh, sorry, 0.1 ounce in that. For $24, which makes it cost a whopping $240 per ounce. Um, the dip brow from EBH, that's gonna cost a cool $128.57, but I don't know that's really a comparable product. Uh, a lot of my friends really like the Ulta Brow Tint, which is $10 for 0.176 ounces, and that's gonna cost you $56.82 per ounce. Um, I don't know how any of these other products perform against it, but that wasn't the purpose of this. It was just like, similar-ish products, 
you can see how much it costs. So like brow gels are all over the place. It's like from $20 an ounce up to $280 an ounce, which is crazy. That's crazy. That's crazy. Oh my God, that's so crazy. This is little. Like this is so little that I don't know that I would buy this again, whether or not I like it. Because like it's so little. I don't know how long this is going to last me. I'm doing 30 days. I'm like concerned that before 30 days this is going to dry out on me. This is so small. Let me see here. I'm just like, this is so little. This looks like a sample size mascara. It doesn't feel like a full size product. And if you're like a, supposed to exchange a full size mascara like every three months, like that's how long you should use a mascara. And how long, how fast should you change this because it's TV. Just saying. Just that thought. Oh my god! Mm. What I do like about this, this is the Glash Slick from Glossy, and we're gonna talk about it. But look at this. It comes in that pink. It comes in pink! I like that it comes in pink. Most most mascaras come in a black too. It's pretty simple. Look how sleek it is. Lush packaging. Simple. Hello, Apple. This video gonna be for 125,600 minutes long. Okay. Let's do some costs per ounce breakdown. $16 for this little mascara. Um, not little, but you get 0.29 ounces, and that's gonna cost you $55.17 per ounce. Um, this is their 248th go with this. So if you remember from my About the Brand video, the mascara didn't exist for a long time because they were having lots of issues getting it down. It took them 250 tries before they put out something that they were proud of. So like props to you Glossier, get up, try again, make the product that was of your dreams. I did not find any ingredients in here that like were perplexing to me. So I'm just gonna tell you the key ingredients. Keep it simple, this one's gonna be real fast. So Japanese fiber technology, one and two millimeter long curved fibers that hook onto lashes, adding length. Um, so consider these your lash extensions. So um, you'll see in my first impressions video, because I'm filming these all out of order, um, I was, I, there was something that looked like a fiber and it's like, are these fibers? And I was right, they weren't fibers. It has vegan biotin, so that's going to condition and strengthen for a healthier, softer lashes over time. It has natural shine polymers, which enhance the formula's black pigments so lashes look extra shiny and sleek. Doing the opposite of matte, not flat. They're looking shiny, they're looking good, they're looking healthy. And then the tapered comb brush, which I can show you that. The tear bristles and precise tips separate top and bottom lashes at the root, um, ensuring even application. That's really all that's going on with this. Uh, let's do some price comparison for you. Luckily for us, I've tried a few mascaras, so all of these are ones that I've tried. So the gloss they went for like the first time is like gonna be on the upper half, it's like right in the middle. $16, you get 0.29 ounces, as I said before, it's gonna cost you $55.17, the most expensive mascara. And my favorite mascara is YSL The Shock, and that one's $103.57 an ounce. And then a very popular one is the Too Faced Better Than Sex, which is $24 for 20, I'm sorry, for 0.27 ounces. It's gonna cost you $88.89 per ounce. And then another one I love is the Essence I Love Extreme Volume, which is actually right here in front of me. You get 0.4 ounces, which is the most out of any of the ones that I have on this list. And it costs you $12, basically. $12.48 an ounce. So, Glossy, I feel like you got your mascara price like right. I feel like okay with that price. Like ounce wise, I feel like good about that. So props to you, mama. Okay, the claims of the Lash Slick Mascara are it's cruelty free, paraben free, fragrance free, hypoallergenic, allergy tested, dermatologist tested, ophthalmologist tested, and suitable for sensitive eyes and contact lens wearers. Not irritating. Next we're gonna talk about Lid Star. I 
want to get right into this packaging. Why? 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 Is it shaped like this? Like in, oh God. Like why is it shaped like this? In theory, it's like cute. I don't have a beaker holder, this isn't my lab! Get out of the my laboratory, DD! No, I don't want it shaped like this. Why? Because I keep products on my desk. This is the sound of the lid star falling over. But also, I know that's flat. I'm not gonna store it like that because the applicator sits at the bottom. I want the product to be on the fucking applicator. I don't understand. I don't understand. It's someone from Glossy he sees this. If you know why, like why is it shaped like this? I just don't. I don't understand. Okay, so it's $18 for the lid star, and this is an eye gloss for those of you who don't know. Uh, you get 0.15 ounces, so per ounce is $120. The key ingredients, the stars, the lid star stars, lid star star ingredients. There's floating multicolored pearls. I feel like you know what those do, but I'm gonna read what they say. Ultra fine reflective pearls in colorways custom balanced for each shade. Soft lock technology, so that's when the coat on each pigment allows the formula lock onto lids for 12 hours without creasing, fading, or smudging. So it's supposed to be grease proof. And then the angled doe foot applicator, which, okay, stop bragging like every lipstick has that. So um, the long edge allows even distribution across the lid with a precision tip for detailing. I don't know if this is a product that you need to detail with, but if you are someone who does that, like, let me know because I've been trying some stuff with it and it's just like, I can't. The claims of this product, it's cruelty-free, paraben-free, fragrance-free, hypoallergenic, dermatologist tested, ophthalmologist tested, non-irritating, safe for the eye air, and suitable for sensitive eyes and contact lens wearers. Basically the same claims as the mascara. So let's do some cost comparison. So I don't have too many eyeglasses in my collection. In fact, I only have one other one and it was from Pat McGrath and you're all rolling your eyes at me. Uh, the thing about the Pat McGrath one is it came in a kit so I don't know how much it would cost uh, a la carte. Uh, she doesn't have an eyegloss a la carte to like guess. There's another product that came in a kit but she now sells like a standalone product to be able to like price that out. But I could not do that with this product. So. I had to just add things that I've never used before. So Glossier is on the cheaper side of eyeglasses that I found. So as I said, it's $120 per ounce. The cheapest one I found on this list was gonna be the Mac Studio eyeglass, which is $44 an ounce, which is like really cheap compared to the other ones. And the most expensive one I found was the Estee Lauder eyegloss, which is gonna cost you $216.67 an ounce. Yeah, I really didn't have a lot to compare this to. I, I thought Butter London was a drugstore brand, and that one was $141.18. So I feel like the eye gloss world, it's like apples and oranges. I don't know like what a regular price of an eye gloss would be, so this seems consistent with most of the brands. Um, it's actually on the cheaper side. So this is the Halloscape. Haloscape? Haloscape is what I'm gonna say. Uh, it's $22 for this guy, and you get 0.19 ounces, which makes it $115.79 an ounce. I hate this packaging. This looks cheap as shit. I don't like that it's white. I don't like the way it looks. It looks cheap. It looks like wet and wild. It's like not, it doesn't feel like cool and hip. It doesn't even feel like a minimal. I just like don't like it. It just looks cheap. It's real cheap. Uh, key ingredients. It has actual crystals, so how hippie to be trippy and millennial. So the actual crystals, the outer ring, because there's like the middle part, which is white, and then the outer ring. The outer ring is enhanced with real rose quartz or golden topaz. I assume mine is golden topaz because it was the golden color. It also has coconut and castor seed oil, which is rich in vitamin E and they give you the solid core. So the center is coconut oil and castor seed oil. And that's gonna give it a dewy sheen and an easy glide. And it also has sweet almond oil in it, which is a super moisturizer, rich in fatty acids. And it claims to be hypoallergenic, dermatologist tested, paraben free, fragrance free, and cruelty free. I didn't find any other ingredients in here that were like 
it was like basically all silicone and oil and goop because it's to make you look like you just sweat a little. <laughs> uh, no, I'm not playing with the products. Was. So let's do some cost comparison. I actually only have one other product. No, I have two, but one actually looks like this and the other one doesn't. So as I said, the Glossier House Scope is going to cost $115.79 an ounce. I also have the Ritual Defeat Rare Light Luminizer. I'm just putting it as a cream highlights category because I apply them all the same and they all do the same thing. So cream highlight is the name of this category on my Google Docs. That one you get 2 ounce, 0.2 ounces. It's $145. And of course, my favorite one that I have that is Pat McGrath Labs. Skin Fetish, that one's $48, you get 0.23 ounces, which makes it a cool $208.70 per ounce. Yikes! Uh, yeah, but I feel like these are all gonna last me forever, so now we're gonna talk about Cloud Paint. So, Cloud Paint is going to be $18 for 0.33 ounces for a total of $54.55 per ounce. I don't like this packaging. It's cute. Like, I have no issues with like it sitting on my desk all flat like that. No, no. I don't have the same issues that I have with the Lid Star. Just like, why is it shaped like that? Um, I have a lot of control issues with this, so like a little of this goes a very, 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 very long way. And every time I go to like try to put a little bit on my hand, I get like half the bottle. It's a mess. So I'm like, we need to figure out like a better way. Can we just like like a little like a pump, like a third pump, one third pump. Key ingredients: the stars on top. Somebody bring me some hair. Collagen. That's gonna retain a high amount of water and hydrate and visually plump skin up with moisture. That seems like a buzzword to me. I'm sure collagen does like the things it's doing, but like when you think of a collagen product, you're like, oh, it's gonna make me look so young. Collagen is important. Put it in my face. No, that's not what it's doing. This isn't claiming like over time, like improves the quality of your skin. It just like has collagen and it's serving a purpose in this product. It has a smooth gel system, so one of a kind lightweight gel cream texture that makes for silky even application. That's not an ingredient, I don't think. It's like probably a series of ingredients. And then there's blurring powder and pigments, which provide a soft, diffuse, seamless finish. Blur, 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 blur. My findings as far as like um, some weird ingredients with Epsom salts, which is scientifically known as magnesium sulfate. Magnesium sulfate, also known to be an effective toxin and oil absorber in skin, it also serves as an anti-inflammatory, sometimes fighting acne and blemishes. So it's going to be okay to put on that. Um, this ionic strength and anti-inflammatory powder makes magnesium sulfate popular ingredient in beauty products. I don't know what purpose that serves. When I think of like anti-inflammatory, I'm thinking like skincare. It's like I know I don't. I, I really don't know what this product. I don't know what it's doing in here. I'm not mad that it's there, but like. I've only ever Epsom salt bathed my feet, so I guess my face is a foot. A foot is a foot. And the other thing I found here was the Methyl Methacrylate Cross Polymer. It's a film former. It's going to make your skin feel smooth, like Dove Soap. So if you like that feeling, that's what it's gonna do. Maybe I'll use this if you wax your face, like right after you wax your face, give it a day. Okay? You know what that film forming. Okay, so this is my first foray into like liquid blushes. So I had to compare it to a bunch of things that I've never tried before. So Glossy Cloud Paint is gonna cost you $54.55 per ounce. The next closest thing is gonna be the NARS Liquid Blush and that you get 0.5 ounces costing $60 per ounce. So um, it's not far off the price of the NARS. It's a little bit cheaper actually. We also have the Benefit Go Go Tint, which is $30, and you get 0.33 ounces, costing you a $90.91 per ounce. And then I just went to find the most ridiculously expensive liquid blush so we could have a top. That's gonna be the Giorgio Armani A Line Liquid Blush, $38 for 0.13 ounces, like which is way freaking less than all the other ones, and it's $292.31 an ounce. Lux Brands got me fucked up. They're like, this is $100 and you get like one hundredth that you would get on a $20 one. <sighs> I can't, the brain just can't handle it. It's 
hypomallergenic, dermatologist tested, paraben free, fragrance free, and cruelty free, 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 free. Finally, we have Generation G. Generation G. It is in fact a product. So this is their lipstick. Cheer matte lipstick. $18. I weighed this in grams for whatever reason. Um, so just keep that in mind, it's not going to be ounce edge, but it's six dollars per gram. Its key ingredients are the wax matrix. So it's a combination of sunflower and synthetic beeswax. And it creates a smooth, cushiony texture and feel on the lips and protects against bullet breakage. What? Oh, oh, inside the bullet because it's a bullet. Okay. I'm caught up. I'm caught up. Blue agave, which binds water inside lips for comfortable wear. Safflower oil is high in lin linoleic acid. <laughs> linoleic acid. It creates a barrier to prevent moisture loss in the lips. And lychee rose scent. To me, it smells like wax, but I guess that could smell like lychee. Packaging. Feel the same way about the halogen as I do about the like white pouring. It doesn't feel chic to me, in my opinion. I feel like all the other packaging is real chic. I just don't like those two. I didn't find any ingredients in here that were like perplexing. It's all pretty standard but let me get you some claims do we know okay so like i started doing this before glossier play like announced but like now it's gonna be like in the mix of it no idea what glossier play is if it's announced by the time this video goes up then like so be it but like i don't i don't know <laughs> the claims of the generation g lipstick it's cruelty free vegan paraben free hypoallergenic allergy tested and dermatologist tested <laughs> Let me do some cost comparison for you. So cost per gram, it's pretty cheap actually. So um, three grams, which is like about it. It's like three to four grams seems to be the typical for like a traditional lipstick in a bullet like this. Uh, the only one that's cheaper that you would find like in a like a Sephora would be the Kat Von D Set of Kiss Cream Lipsticks, which are 3.4 grams. It would be like five dollars and eighty-eight cents per gram. Uh, Max just a little bit more expensive than the Glossier. Pat McGrath is like just slightly more expensive. Uh, four grams for thirty-eight dollars. It's nine dollars and fifty cents per gram. All right. Whew. That was my first go at this kind of video, so it might be restructured, and when I watch it back, I'll probably make that decision. Let me know your thoughts and opinions on the structure of this video. Should it be broken up to two videos? Should it, like, let me know? Um, ingredients are gonna be tough for me to get through every time. I don't know how to pronounce them. I don't know that much about them. I'm doing my best to bring it to the people and make us all smarter. I encourage you to like just pick a product and look at all the ingredients next you're like what oh my god i cannot believe that these things are inside of these things that i put on my face nor can you pronounce half of them which is like stupid and crazy insane um yes let me know are you surprised by any ingredients i threw at you today polyethylene is probably the most surprising one to me um that's in the concealer but more thoughts on the concealer later i don't want to spoil my content be on the lookout soon uh, for my first impressions, and then after the first impressions, I'm gonna do half my face in Glossier and half of my face in comparable products so we can see how they perform. I, I will report back after March 18th to let you know how I liked everything and what I would buy again, what I wouldn't, what I do recommend, what I don't recommend, okay? But in the meantime, bye!